Hey guys, how's it going? Jason here, and today I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of an actual project that we did and show you how you can earn lots of money creating videos for your local restaurants. So this is actually a bit of a nostalgic video for us because that's exactly how we started our videography journey. In this video, we'll take you through a step-by-step -step process of how we did it. And hopefully by the end of this video, you can gain the know-how and the confidence to do the same thing yourself. The first step of this process is landing the gig. How do you land a gig with your local restaurant? Well, the most important thing is your portfolio. You need a strong and viable portfolio for restaurant to trust you and hire you. But what if you don't have a portfolio? This is what happened to us when we first started. We had no portfolio, but we were so passionate about food and we wanted to do videos for restaurants. So what we did is we went on Instagram and started DMing restaurants in our local area offering to do videos for them for free. By doing a number of these free shoots, we are able to create a portfolio that we could put on our Instagram page. When you get like maybe three or four free shoots under your belt and get a strong portfolio, that's where inquiries will start coming in and you can also outreach to restaurants in your area offering to do a paid shoot. Because now they can look at your profile and they see strong evidence that you can create these cool and awesome videos. Once you started getting inquiries or in the process of chatting to a restaurant, this is where step two comes in. You need to learn how to package up your videos. I see a lot of beginner filmmakers. When inquiries come in, they be like, mm, I can help you do a couple of videos here and there. But what is that? It doesn't fill your clients with confidence when you just say, I can do a few videos for you because like it's not clear it's not definitive because what you really need to do is learn how to sell your videos as a package if you don't understand what i'm saying let me give you an example if a local restaurant comes to you and wants to boost their social media page i would offer to them a social media package this package would include a four hour shoot and 20 social media reels. Can you see that by proposing a package like this, it makes it clear to the client, because of these 20 social media clips that we're creating for you, you can therefore reach your goal. Another idea for a package is websites. Restaurants need websites because customers will go to their website to look at their menu or to make a reservation. So offer to do a website package where you can create a one minute brand story for them, showcasing the story behind how the restaurant is created and also the best dishes of the restaurant. Also in this package, you can put a website banner video. This video would be show on the front page of their website. The important thing about packaging your videos is you really want to think about what your videos can do for these restaurants. How does these videos help your client achieve their goal? Once you've done step two, it's time to move on to step three, pre-production. The first thing you want to do in pre-production is ask your client what content do they want to emphasize or highlight in the shoot. Maybe they want to emphasize their new pizza or their new dessert or their new drink. This way you can plan ahead and know what to showcase in your videos. You also want to communicate with your client which date and what location the shoot will be at. Would there be any talent involved? You also want to discuss with your client about the concept of the videos. Does your client want the videos to be upbeat and happy or does he want the videos to be more moody, luxury and premium? A good way to do this is go on Instagram, find a few videos that you really like and you want to replicate it on your shoot day, send them to the client and ask them what they think about the concept. If the clients liked the reference videos that you've sent them, you can start creating your pre-production document. On the other hand, if they don't like the reference videos that you've sent them, ask them to send you reference videos that they think are great instead. This way you can get a good feeling of what concept the client would like. So. Once you've discussed with the client what things they want to emphasize in the video, the date and the location of the shoot, organizing talent, and the concept of the videos, you're ready to start creating your pre-production document. I recommend using a website called Minanote. Minanote is a platform that kind of allows you to organize notes, pictures into a very presentable format and you can share this format with your clients or with the talents in the shoot as well it is very easy to use it looks elegant it's just a great tool for creatives in general so this is the pre-production that we did for a recent shoot our client was a pizza restaurant called arthur's pizza 
And the brief for this project is to create a library of short, engaging social media videos because Arthur's Pizza really wanted to boost their online presence. And next, we have things to highlight. During our call with our client, Arthur's Pizza told us that they wanted to highlight their quality ingredients, the mouth-watering aspect of their pizzas, the fact that they have larger pizzas and it has a better value than their competitors, the fun dining experience, and the delivery aspect of their business. And next we have shoot schedule. This is a four hour shoot. So we allocated the first hour to shooting the cooking process of the pizzas and the pastas. Basically gonna be capturing the chef, like putting sauce over the pizza dough, the making of the pizza dough, putting all these toppings. And then the next hour we'll be doing product shots. We're just gonna be placing them at a nice location in the restaurant and taking some slow moving product shots of the pizzas. And from three to five, we're actually gonna be capturing lifestyle shots. This is where we're gonna organize the models to come in and pretend to be the customers of the restaurant. We're gonna get shots of the models having fun, enjoying the dining experience, you know, feeding each other with pizzas and just having a great old time. Next, we got video concepts, and this is where we'll plan out our videos. So as you can see here, the first six videos, we're gonna focus on just pizzas. So each video is gonna be focusing on the individual pizza. And for the next two videos, from video seven to video nine, we're gonna be focusing on pasta dishes. So you got your shoot schedule, and you got your video concept. So on your shoot there, you should know exactly when to shoot things and what to shoot. So next are some reference videos. So once we found them, we sent them to the client and the client loved it. They said, hey, this is similar to what we want. So go ahead and create videos similar to this. Last but not least, don't forget to do a shot list. I would say we bring a shot list to every one of our shoots because it is just so important in streamlining the shooting process. In this project, I have categorized my shot list according to the schedule of the day. In the first hour, we'll be focusing on the cooking process. I then go to my reference videos and grab screen grabs of the shots that I wanna get inspired from. In the second hour, we're gonna be doing product shots. Again, I have screen grab shots from the reference videos that I wanna emulate in regards to the product shots. So how I will use the shot list on the shoot day is that I'll print it out beforehand. I'll bring it to me to the shoot and I'll kind of reference it before I do every shot. I'll look at, hey, what is the camera angle and what is the camera movement? And then I'll do the shot. So that is how you create a pre-production document. It's gonna make your life and your client's life a lot easier on the shoot day itself. So please implement it into your system. And now we're moving to the fourth step, which is the shoot itself. So I do wanna tell you about our equipment. For all our video shoots, we use a Sony A7S III. For our lens, we use a G Master 24-70mm f2.8. I love this lens because it gives me the flexibility of shooting wide and tight at the same time. However, this lens can be quite expensive. So for videographers, they're looking for a cheaper lens. I do suggest the Sony or the Canon 50mm f1.8. So why I suggest this lens is that it is a 50mm focal length, which is equivalent to the focal length of our human eye. So what that means is that the image it produces would be the most similar to what we see with our eyes itself. So I'm gonna stop the video right here to tell you about some of the exciting things that are happening in our channel. We are launching a one-to-one -one coaching program. So for those of you who want to build your video business to six figures and are interested in getting one-on-one -on -one coaching, please click our coaching link down below. Second thing, we're also excited to announce that we're launching our first digital product and entrepreneur's kit. In this kit, you find all the business and production templates that we used in the past three years to get our business to six figures. So keep an eye out on it. The product will be launching next month. So the first thing you should do when you arrive at the location is to talk to your client. You want to sit them down and run through the schedule of the shoot, even though if you guys already talked about it beforehand, to make sure that both of you guys are on the same page. Next, you want to choose where in the restaurant you want to shoot. Ideally, you're looking at somewhere with a nice background. So make sure there are no distractions in the background like fire extinguishers, weed posters, rubbish bins, or like unwashed dishes. You want to choose a place where there's a nice background. One important thing to know when you're doing food shoot is you need to make the background look really nice. So what we've done here is we've put some really nice vegetables. Like if you can see the, some of the distinct colors are red and green. Those are like kind of like the best colors when you're shooting food. 
Now, once you figure out where you're gonna shoot, you're gonna set up your lighting. And I can't emphasize enough how important lighting is because out of all the variables in filmmaking, lighting makes the biggest difference between bad footage and good footage. And let me tell you why. So in every one of our shoots, we employ a lighting technique called key lighting. This is when we put the lighting 45 degrees from where our camera is shooting towards. As you can see here, I've put my Aperture 120D right over here. So the lighting isn't facing the subject face on, the lighting in is coming in from the side. And what this does is that it creates depth in the image. It makes the image looks more cinematic because as you can see here, there's lighting on one side and there's shadows on the other side. On the other hand, if you're putting the lighting behind the camera and the lighting is coming in on the subject straight on, your image is going to be looking flatter. It's going to be looking less cinematic. So if you start setting your lighting 45 degrees away from your camera, you're always going to get cinematic shots. Now the whole setup of the Aperture 120D costs around $700. So for those who are seeking like a much cheaper alternative, I would recommend getting these like smaller video lights. You can find them in the Aperture store as well. They would cost anywhere from around $100 to $200. Even with these smaller lights, you can employ the same lighting technique as what we did here. Now that's it for lighting. Now we're going to move to how you should direct your talent. Chefs are known for being notoriously fast with their actions. So if you don't give clear directions to your chef, you're gonna miss a lot of the shots. So I always tell the chef two things before I start shooting. Before you do something, just always tell me what you're gonna do. Oh, okay. And then, um, and then often I'll say um, three, two, one, and that's where you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, just give me a second. So with the cheese, I'm gonna get you to kind of like sprinkle up more oh, okay. from the top. Yeah, sure. yeah. From the top. Yeah, more from the top. Yeah. Okay. And three, two, one, go ahead. And the last thing you want to do in your shoot is to remember to clean up after yourself. Often in shoots, it can get a bit messy, tables and chairs get moved around, there's going to be leftover food here and there. Help the owners of the restaurant clean up some of the stuff, be polite, be respectful because what you're trying to do is you want to build a relationship with the restaurant. You want to be able to come back and do future shoots. That's how you're going to make a lot of money. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you find these steps useful and I hope you have gained the confidence to do these shoots yourself. If you like this video, please hit it up with a like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell button because you'll get updated every time we put out a new video. If you wanna hear more about our journey of how Jonah and I went from beginner filmmakers to building a full-time production company, be sure to sign up to our email newsletter, link in the description box down below. In our newsletter, we go deep and share all aspects of our journey, including personal stories, insights, challenges, and struggles that we face while building this six-figure production company. If you guys have any comments or anything you'd like to share, please let us know in the comment box down below. You can also email us at jonoandjason at gmail.com. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.